Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI. And this is a 17-year-old patient who played basketball. They had some pain after a game, and they thought they may have a ligament sprain or some bony abnormality. And we did the MRI here, and we see that their Achilles tendon looks fantastic. Comes down here, there's no uh, infiltration in the Kegner's fat pad. We see down here the plantar fascia looks great. And we look at the Taylor Dome to make sure they don't have an osteochondral defect, which is a pretty common thing. Do not see an osteochondral defect. Down here is the sinus tarsi. This little area is filled with fat. The fat is not inflamed. There's no fluid in there. That looks good. And now we're looking here at the posterior subtalar joint. Looks just fine. Here's the talus. And here's the calcaneus. Now we're going to roll off towards the medial side to look at the middle subtalar joint. So this is the posterior subtalar joint. And we roll medially, and we see that there's a problem here. We see a really large middle subtalar joint. It looks like it blends with the posterior subtalar joint. So this is an example of a talocalcaneal coalition, the second most common type of coalition here. The most common type, by the way, is the calcaneus, this bone here, has this anterior portion here. And this is large and broad and articulates or has a broad communication with the, ta uh, the navicular bone. That's the most common one. So the calcaneal navicular is the most common, but here we see there's a nice big gap. And the second most common is this type, again, which is a talocalcaneal between the talus and calcaneus. So this is a common location here. Usually it's the middle subtalar joints, really big and funny looking. A lot of times they have reactive marrow edema. These can be easy to jog by if you're just looking on sagittal images. If they're not that big, you can easily jog by them. But on this one, it's very easy because they have a lot of reactive marrow edema, so this really stands out. And you can see this is very big and uh, hard to miss. I'll put up a coronal view. On the coronal view here, you can see this middle uh, subtalar joint is really broad. And there's a bony spurring over here. You can see that the articular surfaces are not smooth. They're a little more irregular and thick. And you can see that prominent reactive marrow edema that makes it very easy. So this, again, is a talocalcaneal coalition, the second most common one in these patients usually present about this age, anywhere from oh, 12 to 17 years old, they start to become skeletonally mature. And these anomalous articulations, as they mature, I guess, will start to harden and um, be less flexible. And then they start to develop the reactive bony changes and pain. And they get to be about this age. And the last thing is you have to decide, is this a, an osseous coalition? Is there bone bridging? In this case, no, there is no bone bridging. And then if it's not bone bridging, um, we call it a fibrocartilaginous. If you're really fancy, you can call it just a fibrous. And that's if you see really sharply defined black bone right next to each other, the cortex and the cortex. There's really no gray signal in between. Usually it's really sharply defined and clean looking. Again, no gray signal between. And that would be a fibrous coalition. But this one has a little bit of gray there, a little probably cartilage in there. So we call this a cartilaginous coalition. And when they have the cartilaginous coalitions, they're usually more irregular. Instead of being really sharp and clean and thin black line, you'll see some reactive cortical thickening. Again, a little gray signal. So this is a cartilaginous coalition. Most times I'll just say fibrocartilaginous because it's hard to tell and I don't want to think so hard. And so uh, just as long as you can say it's ossified or non-ossified, it's probably good enough. And again, this is a calcaneal, I'm sorry, talocalcaneal coalition, the second most common type. And then the most common type is between the calcaneus and navicular bone here. And again, these are patients usually adolescents between 12 and 17, and they um, have a flat foot deformity often, and they have pain in the foot. So think about this, and thank you very much.